The SPAD and Railway Operating Incident Form, Signal Passed at Danger. There are two types of incidents that you can add as the main event in the sub event section of the SPAD and Railway Operating Incident Form. These are Signal Passed at Danger and Railway Operating Incident. In this lesson, we will introduce you to the Signal Passed at Danger sub event. But before we look at the sub-event in SMIS, let's take a look at the sub-event definition to understand what should be entered on this sub-event, including who should enter it. To do this, we need to head on over to the RSSB service desk. We are now in the solutions area of the RSSB service desk. You can see at the top of the page, home, solutions, SMIS definitions, SMIS sub events. Let's head to the signal passed at danger guidance section. Firstly, you can find the definition, which reads any train passing a signal displaying a stop aspect without authority, unless the stop aspect was not displayed in sufficient time for the driver to stop safely at the signal, previously referred to as category A. Next, we have SMIS reporting scope. We have details of the SMIS reporting scope, which is an excerpt from table B of the SMIS application matrix. Input by column tells you who would enter this type of event in SMIS. The initial event owner is infrastructure manager, who will create an initial event and complete the risk ranking. If the TOC or FOC carries out the investigation, then the, then the IM then transfers ownership of the SMIS event to the RU. For more information, please see SPAD input process guidance. This also details the RIDDLE reporting requirements. In this case, dangerous occurrence 74, signal passed without authority. Next we have a list of what type of events are included. So this includes category A signals passed, including those leading to collisions and derailments, category A spads involving trains conveying dangerous goods, and marker or stop boards being passed without authority. Next we have the exclusions. So excluded are Train passing a signal at danger due to staff error, formerly category B SPAD. Please use infrastructure failures, irregular signal aspect sequence. Or train passing a signal replaced in accordance with the rulebook, formerly category C SPAD. Please use infrastructure failures, irregular signal aspect sequence. Um, we have uh, a note here. Uh, a control system section should be added on the form if the TPWS was activated or intervened. Finally, we have event scenarios, uh, which details some common event scenarios and details best practice in terms of how you enter the various components of the event. Now let's take a look at the signal passed at danger sub event on the form. We'll start by looking at the location section in relation to the signal passed at danger sub event. So now we have opened the signal passed at danger and operating incident form. Let's head over to the location section. Remember, we are just looking at the location section in the context of a SPAD as the main event. I want to focus on a couple of fields. First, the platform train interface field. There is a definition of what constitutes a PTI incident to the right of the screen. Please consider the main sub-event and any prior sub-event when answering this question. Secondly, the location type field. For most SPAD events, you should select running line as the location type. There may, however, also be occasions where yard depot or siding is the more suitable location type to select.
Once you have chosen the location type for the SPAD, you will be able to provide more granular location information for, for the event. So let's head over to the sub event section where we are going to add the SPAD as the main sub event. You can see that immediately one red bar appears to the right to remind you about adding objects to the event. And here it tells you to add the signal that was passed at danger, as well as the trains and or people that were involved in the SPAD event plus a reminder to, to select the appropriate roles for all of these objects. We, we will look at the objects section later. The SPAD form questions include, was the signal protecting a running line? Sometimes after you answer a question, you get follow on questions. Was there a signal in rear of the signal passed at danger? Sometimes the answer to a question leads to some more red bar guidance to the right to remind you to add objects to the event. Also, how far past the signal at danger did the front of the train pass? And the measurement unit. Also, did the driver anticipate the signal would clear? Staying within the sub events section, we will move down to prior sub events, where you get to add one prior event if it led to the main event. You can add any of the currently available simplified SMIS sub events as prior events if one of these has led to the main SPAD event. An example of a prior event to a SPAD is, for example, a train fault. Perhaps a problem with the braking system resulted in the train going through a signal at danger. You would select prior sub event equals yes. And at the drop down, you would find train fault. You are now presented with the train fault sub event. Now we will look at the control system section in relation to the SPAD event. The control system section covers any brake demands generated by a train track control system or failures of a train track control system. It is available to be added to a selection of appropriate forms, including SPAD and railway operating incident form, train failure form, and infrastructure failure and irregular signal aspect form. There is also a separate control systems form which can be used for any control system incidents that did not lead to another reportable event. In order to add a control system section to the form, you must answer yes to, was there a track train control system activation or intervention? Now use the section repeater to add the type of track train control system that was involved in the incident. For this example, let's say it was a driver safety device or other vigilance system. You will be asked some specific questions about the control system incident. Did the DSD or other vigilance system generate a brake demand? Yes. Should a brake demand have been generated by the DSD or a vigilance device? No. Why was there an activation or intervention of the track train control system? I'll select fault with onboard control system equipment. Some guidance with a red bar has appeared to the right telling you to add a train fault sub event and to select control system equipment as the type of fault. You are also asked to detail the nature of the control system fault underneath.
Next, we will look at the people, trains and other objects in relation to the SPAD event, where I am going to point out some of the more common objects that you would be expected to record in relation to a SPAD event, including the roles that you would select. So we'll start with person. As you can see, I've already added person to the event using the drop down here. So I've added a person to the event. Now, this person is going to be the driver of the train which passed a signal at danger so I'm going to select driver of a vehicle as a role and also involved in a SPAD. You then have um, the rest of the person section with different questions which you can fill in. I'm going to look now at the train object so this is the train that passed the signal at, at danger. So I'm going to select the role for this train is pass the signal at danger, red or caution. And again, there will be uh, more questions about the train underneath. I'm also going to show you now item or structure. This will be where I will add the signal which was passed at danger. So again, I'm going to select the correct role, which will be signal passed at danger. I'm also going to specify the type of item or structure. So I'm going to select structure and then structure type signal. And you can then specify which signal it was from this drop down list. Lastly, we will look at the possible causes section in relation to the SPAD event, where I am going to point out some of the more common causes that you may record in relation to a SPAD. I will also show you the dedicated category for SPAD specific human performance factor causes. For every SPAD event, there should always be a cause from this category. Let's say the cause of the SPAD event was that the train driver looked for the stop signal but did not locate it. You navigate to the human performance factors, railway operating activities, driving trains, signal passed at danger category and select the correct cause. As well as the SPAD specific human performance factor cause, other causes may also be relevant. For example, perhaps the driver's visibility was impacted. You navigate to environmental conditions and related factors and select view obscured or visibility impacted. Another example could be that the driver saw and interpreted the stop signal correctly, but did not control the train's speed sufficiently. You navigate to the SPAD specific human performance factor causes. And select. Train driver looked at and interpreted stop signal correctly, but did not control train speed. Perhaps there was low adhesion which also contributed to the SPAD and is why the driver did not control the train speed sufficiently. In addition to this, you would select low adhesion from infrastructure vehicles, equipment and clothing, railway infrastructure, unreliable, faulty or not working, low adhesion. Suppose after an investigation, it becomes apparent that the SPAD was caused by the level of competence of the driver. You would navigate to competence management and select the appropriate cause from this list.